the Latinos Out Loud podcast. <laughs> Yo, 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 yo! We ain't playing no games here, or are we? <laughs> it's Latinos Out Loud. You already know, LOL, if you like acronyms like me. And me, who's me? That's me, Rachel La Loca. Hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on your time zone and what you're doing and where you are. But wherever you are, you know what time it is. It's time to laugh. It's time to be entertained, inspired, enlightened, educated. There's a lot of other words I could use here, but I'm going to get right to the show. I'm so excited to have these guests of mine. Y'all know I get real excited, and I'm always going to say this episode is super special, you know, however I describe it, because everyone is. Every one and every one episode is so special to me. I think we're at like... 370 at this point? Yeah, bake at 370. Okay, this is so exciting because we have the founder and head of marketing of the Tragos game, which you all know, Carolina Cosa and Aralis Mejia. Aralis. Aralis. Okay, I don't want to chop it up, botch it That's up. Fine. It's been chopped up, reinvented. <laughs> that is so my many ways. ways. Okay. Aralis, Arisol, my boyfriend. Arisol, stop it. My boyfriend's cousin called me Arisol for a very long time. <laughs> Arisol. Someone you Arialis. Arais. everything. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. And I mean, I'll be like, oh, it's Arialis. And they're like, okay, Arais. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. That is so funny. That's like that Key and Peele sketch. A. A. Ron. Yeah, that's you know? basically been my life. One of my favorites. Yo, y'all know that sketch, right? Shout out to Key and Peele for like that sketch. That like was a life changing sketch and really like reassured my sketch comedy career. Aww. I was like, this is what I want to do forever. Yeah. Yeah. A. A. Ron. Okay. <laughs> Yo, I am so happy to have you here for a multitude of reasons. We've been chatting, talking, bonding for like years now. Yes. I've been supporting this game. I've been playing this game. And then you gave me one, which was so sweet. And then I bring it everywhere. I even brought it to set. Well, you know, I send you the, I always send you the stuff that like, you know, we mention you on. So Tragos the Game. If you guys don't know it, first of all, it's available at Target. <laughs> yeah, flex, Target, <laughs> Target. Um... <laughs> Which is so exciting. Tell us how Tragos came about, Caro. Where did this idea come from to develop Tragos the game? Damn, where do I start? Mm -hmm. I mean, wherever you want, girl. We've been in business for five years now, about almost five years. Saludos. Um, That's great. That's amazing. Yeah. Felicitaciones. Thank you. Thank you. I see you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and yeah, we we started the game just kind of like as this fun idea. Um, I had just come back from traveling um, in Latin America for a while. And I came back and I was like, damn, I feel so like American again. You know, like, you know, when you like visit the motherland, you feel like this like connection, you feel different, you feel cooler. Um, and coming back home, I was like, I, I miss living in Colombia. I was living in Peru, Mexico at the time. Wow, girl. Yeah, it was Get so, it? <laughs> it was so fun. It was like a 20, 2018. Yeah. And so 2019, um, I felt like I needed something to like feel connected to the culture again because I wasn't feeling that um, back home in New York. And so the idea of a cultural drinking game, you know, something that my American friends do anyway, like drinking games, you know, have like game night um, mixed with the idea of culture, something that wasn't on the market. So I had to jump on it and be like, oh, let's play this game together. And at least my cousin, I was like, Let's do this, like, you know. <laughs> she had a Google Doc in rotation with the family, and she's like, I'm making a game. And we're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Carolina, random. Because so Carolina random. was always the creative. She's an artist. She she painted. She went to Frank Sinatra. Like, she was so artistic, Sweet. you know? Awesome. And we were like, okay, she's up to another project. <laughs> yeah, and, and it was just like a passion project. I didn't think anything of it. I was like, oh, I just want to make a game that we can all play. And that's it. But like, help me do it. So Look at that. And then I love out this. of nowhere, it was Sally and she was like, hey, I got a bunch of orders and it was all hands on deck. We all went over. She had piles like in her little apartment in Sunnyside wow. yeah. her dad her mom like everyone like we the had, assembly line of the family and we yeah. had no content of it because it was in 2019 it was before COVID you weren't like moving for content you were just living now it's like make sure you record it 
right? Oh, yeah. Record everything. My mother's obsessed. She's like, why are you not recording? How about because I want to see it? Like, yeah, I want to see my real. child do something and not pause, not to, like grab camera. the camera. And I'm taking mental pictures. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> mental <laughs> video. That is such a story. And it's so Latino. We're so <laughs> familial. We yeah. like family is a a passion point of our mm. culture, and I love hearing how it was reflected into this 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 idea that came to fruition and is now at Target. Did I say that? <laughs> Did y'all hear me? It's at Target. That is huge. We will get into the distribution of tragos in just a moment. Okay, so I'm picturing it. Your apartment, the orders, they're coming in. The it's products flying off the shelf. What was that? Like, did you realize that, okay, my business has now scaled? Like, how did you react to that? Oh, I was freaking out. So, like, <laughs> um, so when we started, you know, I had I had created pre-orders on a website. I was like, all right, let me just before I even invest in like inventory. I don't know if people are gonna actually buy this. Like, I've never sold anything before. I was never an entrepreneur. I was never that kid selling the cookies at school or anything. So I was like, oh, I don't want to spend my money to like, you know, whatever. Like, didn't have that spirit. And cookies, because <laughs> you know these kids get creative. Yeah, but I sold lemonade. Was, yeah, know, exactly. That's not very original, but you know, I was a hustler at age five. Yeah, six. I was never a hustler, never. So I was very like, you know, hesitant to jump on board and make it a whole business. So I put it up there, just being like, all right, um, this is a pre-order. If you're interested, we'll we'll send it to you in like three months. And so many people pre-ordered, wow. and that was the craziest thing. It was like 200 orders we got in about like two months. And I was like, damn, now I actually got to make the game. We on to something. <laughs> um, it's kind of like, fuck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so that's when we had to, like, you know, get all the cards together. The first pack we had was 110 cards. And so we just put it together. There were a bunch of typos. I My Spanish was so, like, bad at the time, too. I remember. Wow. Mom was like, Carolina's making a Spanish game? <laughs> yeah, I was not the person in the family that they thought I'd be doing anything, you know, with the culture. But I think that's why, you know, that's where it came from, right? Like wanting to feel more connected to it in a way that I didn't feel judged. And, you know, with family, especially Colombian, my Colombian side, they're just, you know, they they critique you on everything, the way you look, the way you talk. Like, and so I would always just be that shy kid. Cause I, I was scared to just say a, a word like incorrectly. And so mm. I was called the, the la gringa for a long time. Wow. Yeah. That so I'm I'm loving like hearing this unfold. So your cousins, Aralis. Aralis. I will say it the Latina way. <laughs> Do it. Okay. Latinos are loud, right? Yeah. I mean, hello. We are Latinos here, um, or Latinas out loud. So Aralis, you're the head of marketing. Yes. I read something interesting on your website, and it said something to the effect of like representation in toys and games, and how Latinos are underrepresented in this space. Can you add some color to that? Like, I, I know this product is like moving the needle on that, but mm. elaborate more on that statistic. It was troubling to hear, actually, but I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Milton Bradley, not a Latino. Parker Brothers, I don't think they're Latino. Mm -mm. So, <laughs> what's the deal? I think that the reason that there is lack of representation is because there is a stigma of being more cool in our culture. I feel like people don't really embrace gaming, at, or at least we don't talk about it, you know? Like, it, it was just something that never came to mind here in the East Coast. I mean, I grew up here in Queens. So uh, for me, when I went to LA for the first time, I went for my 30th birthday, right before Carolina invited me to join the team, basically. But I fell in love with how normal in American society, Latinidad was in the, the West Coast. Coast. They mm -hmm. were American Latinos. Here, we're Latinos, and we're like, I'm Dominican, I'm Colombian, you're Mexican, you're this, you're that. So I, I think it's that. I think there's a lot of segregation within our own community that doesn't allow us to come together for a game that speaks to all of us because we're all so proudful of like prideful of our um country that we don't even sit to think wait we're all connected because we're all immigrants here and yes. that just immediately bonds us right 
or with the children of immigrants. Mm -hmm. um, we have stories of triumph, but like it took tribulation to get there. It's always been like a plight for us, yeah. you know? And not just Latinos in gaming, but women in gaming. Ooh. It's, it's the, the fact that we're Latinas, the fact that we're Latino and we're women and we're coming with, you know, we're playing with the big boys now. Like we, we were there in the meetings and Toy Fair and meeting with Target and doing all these things. That that's pretty unique, and that's we're the first bilingual game in Target. Oh my gosh! And you would think the strides that we've made as Latinos, as a society, that we would be ahead of the game. You see what I did there? <laughs> Okay, uh, there's a lot of that here. Um, okay. I'm just so proud of y'all. Really, okay, let's talk about the toy fair. Because here's a useless fact, okay? My first job out of college, I worked for, I'm not going to say the name of the organization, but a Chinese government organization tied to the UN that basically did all of the international fairs in Hong Kong. The stationery show, the international toy fair, international car show. And my job was to write press releases for these fairs and to hire journalists from here to go to Hong Kong and cover the show for their periodical, for their magazine, for their newspaper news outlet, whatever it was. So we would pay, it would be all paid for, all inclusive, and the journalists would go to like the International Toy Show. So, so I have some experience <laughs> with the International Toy Show. Do y'all know about the International Toy Show? There was one at the Javits Center, yes. right? And yeah. then there's one in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a big hub for these international shows. And it's amazing. Like, I remember whenever we would go, the tchotchkes, tchotchkes on tchotchkes on tchotchkes. Basically. It was like <laughs> new games and prototypes and like it's so fun it's so you become a fun. kid again and i wasn't even a mom at the time but now as a mom forget about it if i would have access to all of that like you get to see the poppets before they're in stores you yeah. know those poppets yeah my kids love poppets he even has poppet shoes now i'm like okay we, is this an obsession okay. do i need to talk to the pediatrician um <laughs> So let's talk about the toy fair and your experience. Were you the only Latinas at the toy fair? Like, I don't know if you know the statistic, but did it. you no, see, what did you see? What I don't was... think we were the only Latinas, but we were the most organized and had the most thought out product. Mm. When we went, it was, the game was already like three years old or four years old that we were in yeah. business. And um, there were people, there were prototypes, but... Two things that I think has worked for Tragos is our organization. Mm, we, we have a goal, and that is what we're going to do. I would um, attribute that to Carolina. Carolina's very goal-focused. If she has something to do, she'll do that, um, which I've learned from her. And okay, we, haven't, we haven't created so many products. Mm -hmm. you, you can't just create products. And, and sometimes as creators, we do that, right? We'll, like oh, what about this game and this game? And I think when we started doing that early in our business, we realized that that wasn't going to work for us. Mm -hmm. So we've really condensed it to our tragos and now get loud. That is also a target. Okay, <laughs> flex, flex. Sneak that in there. <laughs> hey, this is okay. I mean, I had a wonderful meeting with Target just the other day about you the Latinos did. Out Loud podcast. Mm -hmm. And they showed me their holiday um, lookbook. And in the lookbook is Tragos Get Loud. Oh, my God. I was so proud of y'all from afar. I was like, oh, my God, sending out that vibe right now to these <laughs> girls. Because it's like, you've got big Target talking about you guys that's on the amazing. road. They, they don't tell us much. So oh, that's news to us. I, I, girls, like, they came up from Miami. And we had a great meeting. And they're like, you know, we're building and developing concepts on how we can elevate what they're doing around the Latino entrepreneurs that are featured in this mm -hmm. lookbook. Which, shout out to Target, by the way, for including these amazing Latino entrepreneurs and Latina and their crafts, their home goods, their games, their jewelry. Yeah. Wait till y'all yeah. see the holiday stuff for Target. I mean, it should be out, right? Yeah, I, mean, I think so. I bought mm -hmm. this. Apple Watch band, which is made by a Latina. It's got like avocados and, and gua guavas on so it. Cute. It's like so Latina. Yeah. And I love it because, yeah, it just they reminds me of my culture. They do a job with yeah. their cultural department. That's how we were discovered. discovered. Oh, tell us more. So um, the, the woman that leads the cultural team, she, or like basically she vets products and then kind of trains them to be prepared to meet the buyer. What basically. a cool job. 
right? Oh, yeah. She she's is, incredible. She's incredible. The way that she talks about consumer products is just like a different perspective. You don't hear people talk about it. It's like understanding color, the way people think, the economy, what people are going to buy a year from now because of things that have happened in the news. Like Ooh, it's, it's fascinating. Crazy. It's fascinating. So yeah. she, her boyfriend found our, uh, our ad on Facebook, got the game and was so, you know, they had a great time. So she reached out, but we weren't ready. And she met up with us one night in Brooklyn and she's like, well, she I don't schooled drink. Us. And we were like, well, we do. <laughs> we're like pounding them back. And like, tell us more. Tell she sat with us for like two or three hours. Wow. Just telling us every step of what we should do. Yeah, and that was so I helpful. For it, if it weren't for that call, we wouldn't have been prepared to do the big deal. Because mm, selling a Target is not like you could fulfill your own order or you can. It's, it's a, a lot whole, of steps. Yeah. A lot of steps. Yo me imagino. I would imagine that there's a lot of back end, you know, yeah. work and administrative and like with your vendors and mm -hmm. printing. That's that's very, you know, uh, there's levels to this. Yeah. Yeah. All from wanting to just play a game with the family. <laughs> like, <laughs> Caro, Aralis, I'm, I'm just so inspired by this story. I know the Eloeleros will be too, because Thank this you. is really just it's synonymous with our work ethic in this country. And it also showcases that really, okay, this is going to sound generic, but you could really put anything that you, you could do anything that you put your mind towards. Yeah. Look at this dream that you had or this like game that you just wanted to play with your family. And now it's making so many people happy. I play the it's, game and it, the <laughs> questions are like, you get that one question, you're like, no, they did it. <laughs> no, they did it. It's just so in tune with the yeah. culture, our nuances. Yeah. You know, and that's that's like honestly, that's the part that keeps us going, or at least me, like knowing that you're changing people's lives for the better. And you know, it could be just like one game night, but the comments, the reviews, the oh my god, my family came through, we had the best time, like creating <laughs> the best memories, like that's so special. Like you can't just drop that, you know. It's amazing. The connection, you know, it, it's yeah. an opportunity for us to connect. And I think this podcast is the same thing. Thank you. I was going to say it, but I'm glad you did. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> it, it, it does. Go like on. When, when I went to the Her, Her Larius show for your birthday, we are like birthday so twins fun. kind of. Oh, thank and you so much. And that's when I got my gift, my game. And it was so I was so, nice. so impressed with the diversity of Latinidad that was represented thank there. You, you know, and I think that's why I do this is because I think that where the world and the country shifting, Latinos have to, have to, have to stand together. We yes. cannot continue to separate ourselves from where we come from or think you're better than this, or we have to stand together. As consumers, we hold a bigger value in this country yeah. as our, our voice. Like we as are voters. a big, mm -hmm. big driving force of this country and we don't even know our power. It's really interesting how we don't know our power, but if you just Google some stats real quick, Eloeleros, like what Latinos contribute to the gross domestic product, mm -hmm. the GDP, how we over-index in certain areas like movie going, it's, it's mind-blowing. And the ratio is off, like comparatively speaking, yeah. if you go to the movies, let's just say, por ejemplo, you don't see us on screen. Like there should be a more even ratio of like how we over-index and how we see each other reflected in media and I read that stat on your website I'm like huh you're right there aren't many cultural games out there you know in Target online Amazon wherever yeah but there's you, a lot of not like non-bilingual and like non-representative products across the board like right. any industry you look at I mean we kind of fell into games but then it makes us like open our eyes to the whole market and we're like well where are we in I don't know like Clothes like that's still growing too, True. like apparel. Yeah, all of it. All of so it. now you have leveled up again. Another game reference. <laughs> Next level. I love it. <laughs> I'm a cheese monster I flex. Love, okay? I love puns. <laughs> oh, we are very punny. <laughs> Call me the Energizer punny, okay? Because it's nonstop. Listen, um, now you have the Get Loud Tragos edition. What is that about? First of all, you know I love the word loud. Okay, yeah. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> there were so many different names. It was like Dimelo. It was like... Oh, um, I still like that one. Yeah, Cuéntame. <laughs> like all of these things. But we, we stuck with Get Loud because we do get loud when we 
play the game. Can I touch it? Of course. Of course. May I? Yeah. So Get Loud came because everybody was saying, you know, Dragos is drinking, it's drinking. We need a family game. And oh. we decided, okay, we, we're not going to make a Dragos family game. It's weird. It's weird. <laughs> so we <laughs> like, did, come on, kid, down the Heineken. What do you mean? Like, I mean, I no. played like, with my niece. That milk. Like, like, <laughs> I, I gave her a root beer flow, and she was just oh, okay. You know, so you can still play it, still but have it, fun. And like what I did with chiclet, chiclet. We used right. chiclets. We had gum instead of drinks. So there there yeah. is different levels of playing it, and I think five years in, people now are starting to separate the tragos and know, hey, there's other ways to play it. Yeah. But Get Loud was just the whole concept. It was educational because it's not only for Latinos. It's made by Latinos. But if you like language, if you like games, this is a game that can be played by with anyone. by anyone, by cultural <laughs> families, which are so huge and hi, not hi, talked you about, doing? you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Russian Dominican here, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But people don't, yeah. don't think of it. It's like, okay, now I'm just Latino. And it's like, no, there's families that and that's want to learn. Yeah. My, my boyfriend's... Not Latino, although he says he is, but... <laughs> is he honorary? I don't know. Remember when Might you called well. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to your man. Romel, right? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, Romel. He's like, I'm not Romel. We're like, where did this name come so from? That was so funny because... Okay, let's just yeah, talk wait. about that moment. Unless time. you want to finish your thought first. Um, I was saying that that's why we came up with this game. He, we, we like to teach the language, and I think people like to learn it, and... When I'm when I'm in Colombia and I've played it with my family there, if they guess in English, they get two points. Oh. If I guess in Spanish, I get two points. So it's like a lot of rules you can create. So it's a guessing game that comes with in both languages. So you could be playing bilingually with, you know, the kids who are not that comfortable with Spanish, but then also with the abuelos that can only play in Spanish if they want to. Oh, that's and then inclusive. It, yeah, that's and they cool. have references that kids will get. You know, we say ages eight and up, but it's literally anyone that can read. So you'll have like a word like baby shark in there, but then you'll also have like um, Walter Mercado, for example. Ah, I love so it. So then the kids are also learning cultural references that they might not have known. And so it also opens up the conversation. It's so cool. I love the sub, the line under the title here, La Madre of All Word Games. Now let's talk about this Romel moment real quick because <laughs> it was like embarrassing, but as a comedian, like those moments, you kind of have to like play off. Like, okay, so when you're on stage in a theater, like the Triad Theater, the lights are like, and you don't really see the audience, which I use to my advantage. Like seeing a big audience makes me nervous. Scary, so the fact yeah. that the lights are blinding and I mm -hmm. can't can't see most of the audience is great. Yeah. Fine by me. Um, I'd rather lose some vision and have my pupils dilated the whole show than like to be able to see hundreds of people. Of now, course. your man looks a lot like a really <laughs> good friend of the show and of mine, Romel. Romel Rodriguez, who's a filmmaker, director, uh, creator, <laughs> and has that same beard and wears hats to like all of my shows. So funny. So I thought it was Romel for the whole show. So wait, we're... We're also like sitting. We also we, got VIP seats. I don't know right why we, we were there like on time, but as soon as we entered the you know the seating, only place available was like front center. We might as well have been on stage with you. Yeah, you were right there. <laughs> I, I might have got you with my saliva. And so in a few were, moments, it's, it's okay. I have no cooties. But like he was right there. Go ahead. And it was our first time going to the hilarious show, so we didn't know like how involved you guys would be with the audience. Oh yeah, we love so it. So we were like we, nervous. We were sweating. We we're like, damn, are they gonna pick on us? Yes, and they did. Yeah, they did. <laughs> yes, it's so funny because I always talk about this. Like at comedy shows, you know, if you're in the front, you're gonna get picked on in some capacity. You know, but it's all love. It was so like, fun. Yeah, I'm so glad you were there. It was so fun. <laughs> so let's. I want to know how to play "Get Loud" versus "Trago." So what's the difference in how you play it? Can you explain how you, how this game is played? So you usually play in teams. So like, let's say I don't know. You have somebody else. Romel's here playing with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's Romel get mad love on this episode. Um, and so we'll take turns, uh, and whoever starts, like basically, I'll have her guess as many words as possible. In one minute. Using Comes with that. a little timer. Oh, so this you have to have, oh, like it's kind of like password. Like you have to have the person guess the word. Right. Without, without what saying, are the rules? Without yeah. saying the word in English or Spanish on the card. So it's like an easy version of taboo or like heads up 
if you're I a I love both of those games. <laughs> Listen, I'm a game, I'm just addicted, you know? Yeah. So once my kids became of age to play board games, olvídalo, mm. I have a whole closet just full of them. And also the moms, we recycle. Like when one kid's, you know, when one mom yeah. is like, oh, they don't play with this anymore, we exchange or what, you know, yeah. whatever it is. Um, and I've played, you know, we played Tragos together, but oh. obviously not with Tragos. Yeah. I can't wait to play this with them because they're going to love this Get one. Get is so yes. fun. As long as they can read, they'll love it. But you know what's funny? I've played with um, little kids in my family. They're like just learning how to read. So sometimes they won't catch references. Aww. And they just like, what is, oh, like blurt out stuff. Yeah, like uh, my little cousin just last weekend, she was playing with us. And the one of the cards said The Rock, like, like Dwayne wrestler? Johnson. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she said, um, it's like what you throw in the lake or something <laughs> we're like rocks and she's like yeah you got it and and we look at the card we're like the, uh, she got it it's Aww. that's so cute <laughs> it is it's a fun so. time so like tragos we it's not a competitive game tragos is just kind of a fun conversation starter party drinking game but um get loud is competitive so i think mm. that's the one big di difference it's a yeah it's a different angle because we, you know, we want to expand on Tragos and we'll have like more expansion packs come out. But what we're trying to do is really expand our audience and just kind of like have diversity with our games themselves. Like you don't want people or our people only playing like drinking games all the time. Like yeah, so not we're everyone. really trying to be the leaders in like a, a game house, like Latinas that have a seat at the table. And since there wasn't, this. we're really making it for ourselves and um, for me, in, as part of marketing, it's been very important to represent it ourselves and talk about it ourselves instead of sometimes when you get to that level of like target, when we were talking to our 3PL company, the other option that was presented to us by target, 3PL is like the company that distributes the game to target. Ah, okay. So we needed to have a partner that would distribute the game to all the targets because we're not going to do it. So, um, they were like, no, well, we'll present it for you. And they were like middle American mm. white guys. And I was mm. like, no. Mm. Are you an <laughs> get yeah. a game buzzer, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, the company that we work with now, they're so um, adamant about us telling the story and us yes. talking about it. And I think us that's really important. Mm -hmm. I love that. And shout out to them for recognizing the importance of the storyteller, yeah. telling yeah. the story. Yeah. I mean, exactly. hearing how it was conceptualized and where it came from. I, if I were a target, I'd be like, sold. Let me get 10 million units. Uh, this is amazing. Yeah, I think Just the, based off the strength of story. The, the most impressive thing, I was like a dog with a bone with Target. That was yeah, my goal from was. day one. Yeah. Was I'm going to get this game and put target. it out there, didn't we you? We talk about goal oriented, or at least for like three years, was like, I'm going to get us into Target. I'm going to get us into Target. I was, like, so. I was like, and at the time, I was like, I don't know. Because, <laughs> because you know, we it feels so niche, you know, to a certain extent. Like, okay, it's the party game for Latinos. So, like, yeah, we're big, but, like, are we big enough for Target? I see. Latinos shop at Target, I, yo. Well, yeah, oh, my God. Sure. Yeah, this is Walmart. She had to convince me, yeah. I just knew there was an audience for it. Yes. When I did the first event with Dragos, so many people. There were so many big brands there, but we were, we made a little sala. We did our own set, and it was it was like a booth. It was like had, a little yeah. booth, so and we did, we were like going to IKEA. We were in California, like driving here, driving there. But the way that people reacted, I'm like, oh, we have like something, something here. big, yeah. And I quit my job. Wow. <laughs> and I was, I was, um, I did marketing for hospitality. Okay. And that's my background, hospitality. And when Carolina had this opportunity to do an event in California named Hispanicize. Shout um, out to Hispanicize, shout out to very familiar. So yeah. we, she was like, hey, I have this booth, but you're the only person that I know could like decorate it. And I was like, oh, I can't take off of work, blah, blah, blah. I don't know how I convinced her. I'm not even that aggressive. Well, she called me but, back. I was like, look, I can't take off of work, but they had been doing me dirty at work for, you know, mm. same tale, tale as old as time. The Latina's doing the work, but she time. can't be in the office. So it's like, she can't present it, whatever the case may be. I was really um, kind of just exhausted of, of trying to impress someone that 
I don't need to impress. Maybe I've, approaching burnout. Yeah. You know? So then she called me back and she was like, hey, but remember, like, you kind of hate your job. <laughs> and, uh, and we're family and, and, like, this could be big for us. So I was like, oh, fuck it. I'm going to go. <laughs> yeah, baby. I and lied now, at work uh, and I said, I'm sick. And I went to California. Yeah. And it changed my life. I think I was at that Hispanicize in I Los Angeles. Say, I was like, where did we? see each other or? we did a pop-up podcast latinos out loud did a pop-up podcast at the time in the hotel in mm -hmm. the conference Continental center yeah. and then we did there was another activation that we did there i i can't really remember it's a little foggy but we were it there for the a few days tecla awards yes we yeah. won the tecla yeah. yes. yes okay yes. we won the yes. tecla for best podcast mm -hmm. or Amazing. no that was in miami we won the tecla that was a year okay. before that was the year before but we went to los angeles just to activate and to be present and to you know absorb Absorb all the yeah. sponsor stuff yeah. and put it on social. Mm -hmm. So wow, we were like two ships passing in the night because mm -hmm. I don't remember. We didn't meet there. We didn't yeah. meet there, but we were there together. That's crazy. So that's kind of cool. So that just goes to show that there's these events where we all go to, but we need yeah. more of them and we need more connection. And yeah. I think that that's. It's our responsibility because no one's going to do it for us. Right. And if this episode doesn't showcase taking action, I don't know what does. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like take action on your instinct. Yeah. Let's mm -hmm. mobilize together. Yep. Mm -hmm. Look at what is happening here. So, I mean, it's snowballing. Are you already working on the next installment of the game? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have a couple of games. In the oh. A couple <laughs> of games, yeah. Okay, we're it's crazy because we're like, we are always... Um, like we're also really close friends, so we hang out and we work together, and it, it's a good synergy that we have. But we're like, oh man, we're so tired. Like we need a break. And then the next day is like, we should create a game. About it. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, okay. And then two days later, Carolina has a whole Google Doc of like first steps. So I'm like, oh my god, this yes. girl moves fast. <laughs> Entrepreneurs, yeah, I'm impatient. so motivated. <laughs> so, could you give us a teaser a little bit on the next installment and what that's looking like, or in the next games coming yeah. out? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. We, we have a yes, exclusive. <laughs> They're gonna <laughs> confer. They're gonna talk. They're gonna kiki about what they can say, which is quite all right by me because you know I like the juice. Give me the juice. Give me the juice. I'm a bad girl. So um, we're creating a murder mystery game Ooh. Uh, with a Latino angle. Ooh. So it's telenovela meets murder mystery. <laughs> oh my God. So that'll be probably done sometime next year, I would say. Yeah. So we, we have a prototype. We've played it and it's just so ridiculous. So, so it's kind of like Clue meets, you know, a few other like game mechanics that we've kind of just made to be more unique. But the telenovela twist is like you know there's a murderer but then bam like the evil twin comes out of nowhere i love there's a it. ghost there's like a um you can talk to the the victim and like the victim is the one leading the story so it's like very layered very fun very it's easy compared to other mystery games because we did <laughs> we did we did our research you played them all was like, we've played or at least isn't so a, a gamer how much fun is this this is so much fun i'm not a gamer Okay. I'm not sitting around. But I bought a like, bunch of games. I'm like, we're going to play. I'm like, She's who like, is she? I have, game night. I have a drawer now in my living room full of games. I'm like, who is this woman? And who, why is she taking over my house? But Market <laughs> research, boo. So we get out, all our family together. And uh, my sister's like leading it and she's reading and instruction. Hour in, an hour it's, in, and she goes, and now how to play. I'm like, uh uh, I, no. It yeah, was it's exhausting. So it's this game is quick, it's a it's a quick way to learn how to play it, and then you know you want to get started. So and that's then, I'm and passionate then there's about a lot that of drama one. about it. Yeah, it's I really love funny. That game. This is so great. Is there a slap involved somewhere? Of course there is. Probably. It's Probably. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to play. This sounds like a game I could play with my and mom. And then too. we have another another um Latin, uh, another tragos coming out mm -hmm. with the more categories more cards you know you can play together yeah we need to keep at it Keep adding to the collection. I love this business model and what you're developing here and at the same time doing it for the community. Yeah. We need to see ourselves more and now we're seeing ourselves in board games. When when we created Tragos, it wasn't just about the games. It was very important for me and for Carolina to give back to our community. So when the earthquakes in Puerto Rico happened, we held a fundraiser 
Then when COVID happened right here at Elmer's Hospital, we donated. I read on your out. website that you donated in the upwards of $20,000. Yeah. Yeah. And we had some remarkable. good years. Which we made some... our uh, founder Forbes 30 under 30. Hey, yeah. Forbes 30 <laughs> under 30. She doesn't like to 30. talk about it, I but I do. She sneaks <laughs> these in. She's so good at her job. I do <laughs> love to talk about it. Because it's a big accomplishment. It's a big deal. And it's, it's something to really be said that Forbes acknowledged that this was important that this gave back to the community and it it's not you know we're not solving cancer by any means but we are putting smiles in people's faces I heard and laughter, laughter is the best medicine yes laughter has cured some people's cancer mm -hmm. i've Apparently. heard that too yeah <laughs> you always hear about i mean laughter think about it i mean it really the endorphins yeah. and mm -hmm. as a comedian you guys said something that i completely related with before is that like i get so much fulfillment from shifting someone's mindset mm -hmm. if it's someone beautiful. dms me on instagram is like yo i was having a really bad day loca yeah. mm -hmm. but then i listened to this episode of lol and now i'm in a better mood i'm like Mission accomplished. Yeah. yeah, it makes your job so worth it. it like, those little moments, they are just like, I did that. And yeah, like, oh my God, did you, you did tragos? I know tragos. And I'm like, yeah. That's yeah. So, I love that. I love this so, so much. Um, I'm, dying okay. for, um, I'm dying for a celebrity moment like yours in the cab oh, that you told yeah, us yeah, the other yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the Uber in, in LA. Uber. And you never know who's listening, who's watching, right? who's playing. Yeah. Who's playing, right? yeah. I always get blown away at those moments. Like, it's not so much a flex. It's just like, oh, wow. I'm putting something out there because I feel like this is part of why I'm on earth, right? Mm -hmm. So when somebody's receiving it and, like, gives it back to me mm -hmm. on some, like, compliment yeah. tip, mm -hmm. it, it really doesn't get any better than that, you know? It does. And when you take a chance to be an entrepreneur, you always have that doubt. You have that imposter syndrome. Sure. You have that, am I even doing the right thing? You know, you doubt yourself so much and it takes so much hard work without the, you know, when you go to work nine to five, you put in a hard work, but you know, I'm going to get paid. You could put in a lot right. of hard work and not get paid. And that's my life. Right. The last <laughs> three years. Yeah. It's hard. It's, it's hard, you know, that. being mm -hmm. at, being at Target, you you don't get paid right away. It's not that they're like, we want mm -hmm. your game. It's like, yeah, pay for the game. We need yeah, 50,000 orders. And then you get And some. then you get mm -hmm. something 90 days after it's on yeah. our shelves. And wow. it's pretty standard business yeah. for like big wholesale orders. But, but people don't, to be honest, you know, so it's nice to get the recognition because yeah. you're like, damn, I've been working so hard. And yeah. for sure, taking a chance. And every day you wake up and you sit behind your computer and I was like, what do you do all day? Everything. <laughs> yeah, my, oh, my dad still thinks I have a radio show. He's like, oh, you got the radio show today? I'm like, it's, all right, it's a podcast. And I was like, so. estás en otra llamada? I'm like, yes, because <laughs> I work from home. <laughs> right. And I'm on the phone with Target. That's huge. I'm so proud of y'all. No, seriously, as like a very I'm an avid Target shopper, I'm there probably five days a week, like Why buying not? stuff. It's or, dangerous. It's so dangerous. <laughs> I go there for work and I end up like spending so much money. I'm like, I didn't. I didn't need any of this stuff. Right. But it just makes your life so much better. Oh, yeah. Then you keep it all. Makes yeah. you happy. <laughs> um, I'm really excited. I want to just ask you, well, two things. I'd love to play around if we can on the show, but I would like to sort of close the questioning portion of what's some advice you have for whether they're the creating a game or just creating something that they're passionate about. What's some advice that you have for the entrepreneurs out there that are maybe debating, should I do this? Should I not do this? Is it a good idea? Is it not? What are some things that you, what are some tips or advice you have for them? Oof. Um, I feel like I always have to go back to just, you know, that big question, like, do I do it? Do I not do it? And it really goes back to like what you're, what you're passionate about, but also like what you're good at. So some people really like, um, you know, a certain industry or something because they know it's going to get them money. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't start a whole ass business just because I think I'm going to get rich off of it. Mm -hmm. That's like that's the, good advice. Mm -hmm. That's like the worst way to start it because it takes so much grit and you may not succeed in the first up to five to ten years. So if you're going to do it and you're going to struggle and not get that steady paycheck, then it has to be for something you really, really love. Yeah, that's and, great uh, advice. And Pat my Elise. advice is to stay focused and diligent and treat it like a job. 
Mm-hmm. You're not, right. you're not, you know, every day you're not like punching in, but you have to get up. You have to answer those emails. You have to be on. It's a job. Yeah. Some people think like, oh my God, it's so cool. You're an entrepreneur. You can like fly here, fly there. Or people that are like, I'm an entrepreneur. I work from home and I travel all the time. It's not easy. I, it, I get my most work done when I'm home with my two screens. I'm not like working it's on the glamorous. go. It's not a glamorous like right. um, job. It's it's rewarding and it, it, you feel great if that's your spirit of entrepreneur. But you have to be focused. I'm gonna tell you this. When I did this shift, right when I left my corporate marketing job, I was like, "Oh, this is gonna be great. I can make my own schedule. I can go to the gym like mm-hmm. for three hours and go to the <laughs> sauna and take my time. I'm working more than I have ever worked ever. in my Always. life. Seven more days a week, <laughs> hours. Mm-hmm. I, I went from like it was a nine to five, but I was there till like ten o'clock mm-hmm. at night. But I went from that to like around the 24/7. clock, seven, seven days a week. <laughs> People be like TGIF. I'm like TGIF. It doesn't really. Uh, it doesn't I don't. It doesn't matter. I work I seven days summer a week. Fridays. I like, drove no, here, no. and she's in the on. Um, I drove here so she could be on the computer doing whatever she's doing, and we will do that together. Like, okay, you drive. I have to write this email, and yeah, I have to post this reel. Mm-hmm. I have, you know, you're always oh. on. Always, always on, on. Mm-hmm. but you have each other's back, which is just so beautiful yeah. as a family. <laughs> I don't know that we could have done it without me. Yeah. 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 Your team really matters. You know, I mean, we, mm. we had a kind of big team, uh, a lot of contractors, point. all Latinas at some point. Love that. Yeah. yeah. It, it just worked out that way. I don't discriminate, but it was just a lot of girlfriends. We haven't had luck with male Latinos, and we've always wanted to bring a male Latino voice into it. Yeah, like the energy. It's, it's different. Like but, we would, um, but sometimes they don't see the goal all the way through. They're like, oh, my God, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do th-. And then you're like, great. At least the ones we've we've worked with. But I'm not trying to diss the boys, but it's one neither. of the reasons why I started Hilarious, okay? Because I never felt a magic like I do when all these women are together. Yeah. See, you you saw it was on We're stage. We're girls, I guess. Yeah. But behind the stage, <laughs> in the back room, you know, in the dressing area, mm-hmm. it's it's magical. It's it's just something I can't really explain. I can't put into words. But the way we have each other's back, mm-hmm. you know, we're back there zipping up each other's costumes. We're running lines. We're giving each other in- encouraging words. Mm-hmm. We're yeah. praying together. We're giving each other tampons. Like, it's just so, it's it's like a, it's <laughs> a unity that I can't Latinas really explain. At the Forbes conference, Latinas and African Americans are the leading um, entrepreneurs in the country right now. Yes. We start the most businesses and I we're contributing that. the most to our economy because, you know, we're making the, the needle move. We buy, we support, and um, hopefully, you know, it will extend throughout. But I think that... And it's that work ethic. Latinas, yeah. we, oh. we were just raised to be so... Do it all. Like, yeah. we saw our moms doing it all. And I think that's where it comes from. I love that so much. Um, so now, as Latinas, can we get busy Let's and play this game? I'm so excited. You see me? I'm like fiending the whole episode. I'm like, I want to play the game. I want to play the game. I'm such a gamer. Okay, which one should we do? Should we do Get Loud? I think we Let's should do Get Loud. loud. Okay. Let's, Let's loud get this. loud. Let's get loud. Okay, how should we do this? Who should go first? You guys know the rules better than anybody. Okay. So I think we should. I can do a test round. Yeah, I think we should have uh, Rachel guess the word. Okay. And we'll okay. Oh my God, pressure. The pressure is you on. Wanna... We'll take some. We'll do. All right. So and we need the little timer. Okay. Should I be the timer, or should no, I? We'll, you want to flip we'll it because okay. you got to concentrate on your answers. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Just get into like my. Okay. Not let us down. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Saralis. I didn't need any more pressure. <laughs> Everyone's watching. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> So we have um, four colors. We have red and orange on one side. And those are the easy ones. Those are the ones you play with like more the younger age. And then we have blue and green on the other side. So it's 800 words in total. Mm. And blue and green are the harder cards. So if you want to play it more with like adults. Okay. okay. I like so. the color coding system. Very easy to understand. <laughs> so do you <laughs> want the hard words or the easy words? Okay. Let's start off with one easy And then we'll go to a hard one. Okay. Okay? Okay. Okay, Okay. watch me get the easy one wrong. Okay, here we go. (laughs) All right, you ready? 
No. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. No. Yes. Okay. I'm nervous too. Wait. So I'm just gonna do a whole round, or yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, it's a game with a king and queen. Um. Uh. Checkers. The no. other one. Chess. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um. Another game. You roll the ball to hit the pins. Bowling. You know what I say in Spanish? No. <laughs> <laughs> El bowling? El bowling. <laughs> Bolos. Bolos. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's a color and a flower. Uh, you're the, uh, a color and a flower. It's like purple, but not. Uh, Lavender? No. Oh, it's a good one. Uh, darker. Lilac. Darker. Darker. Indigo, no. Um, oh gosh. Pass. 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 <laughs> okay, <laughs> what we are. Uh, badass bitches. No. <laughs> okay. No? Okay. Um, family. Family. What we are. Cousins. Yes. Mm. Okay. Okay, um, blank and eggs. Wait, Crack. that's terrible. <laughs> Fry. No, um, no, it's a protein. It's not chicken. It's not shrimp. It's steak. Yeah. yeah. Steak and eggs. One yeah. of my favorites. Yeah. It's from Denny's. Yeah. It's like that's terrible. Denny's. Why did I say that? <laughs> I am a uh, chain food girl. Chain food. Yeah. Oh, I love chain food. Me too. All and right. the Cracker Barrel. Okay. I you got love... four points. Woohoo! <laughs> were those the easy ones? Those are the easy ones. Yeah. Right? Easy yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Oh, really good. Are we going good. to the hard ones now? Let's do the hard ones. This is so right, much gonna... fun. Are you playing at home? Because you too can play at home. <laughs> Okay, All so right. this is All the right. hard round. This is the hard round. All right, um, we're both going to do it. So I'm going to flip. Let's go. Okay, it's a show. She's on Telemundo. Cristina. She's a judge. Laura. Um, it, caso será. Yes. Um, okay, it's a holiday. Jewish uh, people celebrate Hanukkah. It. Yeah. Mazel tov. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> uh, you, you can do check or cash. Yeah. Okay, it's um the little mermaid, the evil um oh, the evil the mom. Evil. What animal is she? The evil mom. Octopus. Octopus. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That was a weird reference. <laughs> <laughs> that took me out by surprise. I'm not doing that. Okay. Um <laughs> the opposite of ugly pretty. pretty. Bonita. Okay. Um the you put this on it's a sweet. Milk. Oh, uh, you know what? Condensed Con milk. Yeah. milk. Oh, but you said milk. It's okay. We got it. Let's go. Um, okay. It's um. You go. You get things like affordable there, secondhand. It's um. Michael Mai's house. No. Mercado de pulgas. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> interesting that you said that in Spanish. Wow. I oh, couldn't think of the English um, one. Um, you said the ferry. That's like um. A method of transportation. No, 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 not a, not a, <laughs> not a, uh, a boat. The other word for a ship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Nice. Well, that time. Right. How many did we get? That's pretty good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hey. Nice. 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 This is so <laughs> Isn't it fun, fun? You and you I can, can go see for hours. How you can get super loud. You can act it out. You can, you know, not use words and just. There's so many ways to play it. So it's mm -hmm. really fun now for the holidays. You know, yes. after Thanksgiving, everyone just sits around and just feels falls full. asleep. That's yeah. it. So bring in the game. <laughs> or just waiting for like to open the presents on Nochebuena. You're yes. like, what do we do for like six hours? Like. So yeah, I'm bringing. You this play is the what games. we're doing. You this is what games. my family's going to be Aww, doing. Sound is so fun. Tag. I love this so much, you guys. I mean, thank you for inspiring me, the Eloeleros, and telling your stories. This is incredible. I can't wait to see what else comes out of this enterprise that you're building. Aww, thank you. And yeah. your family must be so proud. Yeah, they must be. Yeah, they are. They're confused. You know, <laughs> you know it's um. Yeah, they like, they still don't what? really know what we do. And like Carolina said, <laughs> our Colombian families here, and you know how Colombians are. Right? Yeah. Like, Está bonito el show, pero Morena, ¿por qué no te sentaste más? Oh, my family called Morena. You know, <laughs> so they're like, Morena, siéntate más derecha. And you're like, oh, where? Not that I'm not creating bed. games. And, <laughs> but yes, they are proud. They, they, are they proud. must be. Well, we're my also Dominican proud. side is actually really, really proud. They've been hitting me up. It was also my, well, my birthday yesterday, and the messages I got from everybody was so nice. They're just like, saying things like, you know, can't wait to see what you do next, so proud of you, this and that. It's like something you don't hear every day when you're like hustling. 
And so it is nice to like take yeah. a step back and really like appreciate everything you do yourself. Yes, Kyle. You too. Well, and happy birthday. Thank you. It's 30 so, 30. I 30 know. 30. <laughs> do you guys have plans? Is this like a big weekend? Oof. Must be. Yeah. So okay. I'm like um, on my third yeah. celebration already. <laughs> That's how it is. That's yeah. how it be. Tomorrow we're going to House of Yes. Oh, Which fun. Like, mm, there's a slumber party theme going on or something. Okay, that's so, so fun. And yeah. would you mind dropping the handles so that people can follow you on social? So follow us at Dragos Game and um, keep an eye out for our sales that are coming. Target is hosting some really, really good game sales oh, for cool. Black Friday. Cyber Next Monday. week, I believe there's another sale. Great. So we'll be posting that on our Instagram. Stay tuned or and TikTok. go support. You know, in order for us to be able to represent and have more games on the shelves, the community has to go and buy the game so that it's justified um, to have us there. So support. There is demand Latinos. and we have to showcase that demand. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much for coming on the Rachel, show. Rachel, thank you for thank having you. us. Thank you for having and us. Thanks for being letting such us an tell our story. Thank you for saying that. It's it's cyclical here. Yeah. It's just going to keep going around. Like a, like an encouragement <laughs> hurricane. You yes. know what I'm saying? Like no, a you're thought You're doing great. Ah. No, no, you're you. doing great. No. no, you inspire me. No, you inspire me. <laughs> it's lovely. It's infectious, too. Yeah. It's just it's a great start to my Friday. Thank you for Aww. coming out Thank here. Thank you so much my for guys. having us. Well, hello, aleros, there you have it. Please go support these women and their businesses, all these games. You know we like games, but I know y'all be playing some games, not those kind of <laughs> games, but play these kinds of games and let's support this business, okay? Uh, this was a really great episode. Please be sure to follow us if you're not already doing so at We Are Latinos Out Loud. You could follow me at Rachel La Loca. You can give us a call, no big whoop, 978-LATINOS. That's the number, 978-LATINOS. Um, and leave us a voicemail. Tell us what guests you'd like to see on the show. We have a very special event coming up on December 5th. Ooh, cha. Please go to my Instagram to learn more about it. Uh, December 5th is a coming, it's a homecoming for me. And you'll definitely hear more about it in the coming weeks. Um, I also want to shout out real quick the Dominican Film Festival. Me emociona. Last night was the opening night of the Dominican Film Festival. And there was a moment where Armando, who's the founder of the festival, called all the filmmakers and actors, directors, everyone involved in this year's film festival on stage at the United Palace. And there were so many people there. You know, I don't really get nervous, y'all. I don't get really nervous in front of, like, performing in front of people, but... Oh, I was schwitzing. My armpits <laughs> were sweaty. I was like, oh my God, there's so many people. Um, and we all were on stage and we had that moment. And it was just really a beautiful moment for all of us to be on stage together with all these just like iconic people in the game right now. Um, so shout out to Armando and everybody over at the Dominican Film Festival, Henry, Edwin, um, for really looking out. I have a film in this year's festival, my short film, The Swimmers, which is about a Latino couple um, going through infertility mm -hmm. and their journey. And it's a comedy, you know what I mean? So there is some serious, awesome. there's some not so serious moments um, but it was something that I wanted to talk about and I made a film, I wrote a film out of it um, based on, loosely based on my experience. So please check that out. It's called The Swimmers and it is going to play today at the 42nd Street Movie Theater. Oh my God, the AMC. And then it's going to play again on Wednesday, November 8th at 3 p.m. Uh, also at the same movie theater. I think it's the Regal Ewok Theater on 42nd Street. So check that out. DFFNY is their handle on Instagram and just go to DominicanFilmFestival.com on the internets. Thank you so much. This was such an amazing episode. Thank you ladies for coming here thank and you. thank you and you and you and you and you <laughs> and you for listening listening, for watching, for supporting Latinos Out Loud. On that note, we're out. It's the Latinos Out Loud podcast. Oh!